Hi, Dave Williams here. This video is about Zener diodes. To start off with, let's look at the characteristic curve of a regular diode. And the characteristic curve plots voltage and current. Got current here in the vertical axis and voltage in the horizontal axis. So with a regular diode, if you start with applying zero voltage to the diode and then start increasing that voltage, what's going to happen is at some point, it's going to turn on. By turn on, what I mean is current will start to flow in that diode. And so there's, th there's this junction point or this knee where the current starts to current turn on. And it's, it doesn't require very much more change in voltage to, to generate a very large change in current. In the negative direction, you apply a negative voltage for this reverse bias diode and there will be no current flowing until at some point where the diode starts to break down and then you get this, this big drop in current or this big flow in current through, the, through that diode. For something like a 1N4001 rectifying diode, that voltage there, the voltage that this occurs at, is about 50 volts. Now let's look at the characteristic curve for a Zener diode. It turns out that the Zener diode is pretty similar to the rectifying diode that we had over here. Start with applying zero voltage to the Zener diode. So if we have the, the diode over here, the Zener diode and that Zener diode is indicated with the two little arms on it. So if I start applying voltage across this Zener diode in this manner, I'll get that same, that same curve. I'm not drawing these exactly the same scale, the same kind of idea uh, at about 0 0.65, 0 0.7 volts, the 1N4001 turns on, and the same thing for a silicon uh, Zener diode. Going in the negative direction, as the voltage starts getting negative, again, there's going to be some point, some voltage, beyond which the diode turns on, so the current starts to, starts to flow in that diode. The difference is, in a Zener diode, they can be designed to make this point where they start to turn on, called the, the Zener voltage. That can be designed to be any voltage, and uh, maybe not any voltage, but, but a large range of voltages, depending on the design. And I took a quick look at DigiKey, and you can find voltages that are 1 to 300 volts for that for that volt, that Zener diode. I guess it would be negative in this case, but typically these Zener diodes are used in a reverse biased manner. Um, so the, the Zener voltage is typically given as a positive number. So that turn on point is between one and 300 volts and it's designed to be uh, whatever the specific voltage is that you want. So the bottom line here is there's not much difference between the rectifying diode and the Zener diode. The difference is the Zener diode is designed to to start conducting at a certain voltage and it's going to be used in that reverse bias direction. Whereas a signal diode or a rectifying diode like this one is designed to block voltage and you don't want to apply more than the, the voltage that's able to block. It's not designed to be operated in the reverse biased manner. One way Zener diodes are used is for protection in circuits. So let's say I've got some kind of source. I'm going to draw it as an AC source and I've got some load over here. I'll just draw it as a resistor. And let's say the limit to the load is 5 volts. What I can do is apply or place a Zener diode that's rated for 5 volts, or its knee, knee voltage was, is going to be 5 volts. The Zener diode will make sure that whenever the source goes over 5 volts, the voltage that goes to the load never goes over 5 volts. So if I have an input signal that looks like this on the positive half of the cycle, what's going to happen is the if, if the dotted line is the input voltage and the line that I'm going to draw here is the output voltage, the voltage is going to get the, the voltage from the source is going to be applied across the Zener diode. It's going to be it's reverse bias and it won't be conducting. But then once it gets above the Zener voltage, and let's say the, the Zener voltage of this diode is five volts. Once the voltage gets above that 5 volts, the Zener diode starts conducting and there'll be no more voltage change across the resistor. So I'll be stuck there at 5 volts. And then when the input drops below 5 volts, the diode turns off, stops conducting. 
and the, and the input voltage will be across the output voltage. Now in the negative direction, when the input's on the negative cycle, the Zener diode will be forward biased, typically 0 0.65, 0 0.7 volts. So 0 0.65, 0 0.7 volts, the diode will start conducting. And we've got a protection of the circuit. It, the voltage will uh, for that circuit won't get above 5 volts and won't get below 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 about 0.7 volts. So another little tip another typical circuit looks like this and this one's for voltage regulation. So what's going to happen is the output voltage will be regulated to whatever the Zener voltage is as long as the voltage source is not too high or too low and the current to the to the load is not too high or too low and I'll talk about what I mean by too high or too low in a second. So let's label a few things here. So current here is, let's call that IS. This voltage is VS. Voltage across the Zener diode, we'll call that VZ. The current through the Zener diode, let's call that IZ. And the current to the load, let's call that IL. So looking at the currents, the current comes from the source, it comes to this junction here, some of it goes through the, the Zener diode, some of it goes to the load. So let's say, well, so we can write that out. IS is going to be equal to IZ plus IL. As long as the load doesn't change, IL is going to be equal to V out divided by R out. 500 ohms labeled in this case, but whatever R out happens to be. So when I was talking about currents being too big or too little, we want to look at the, the current to the Zener diode. The current to the Zener diode needs to be big enough so that the Zener diode is turned on and it's regulating at the Zener voltage. If you remember on the, on the characteristic curve on the negative side where it went like this, the, the relationship between voltage and current went like this, we want to make sure that we have enough current that the diode is regulating in this part of the, of the curve. So to ensure that happens, the IL can't be too big. Remember IS, IZ is equal to IS plus IL. IS minus IL, I should say. Just rearranging this, equ this equation up here. So IZ is equal to IS minus IL. As long as IL is not too big, definitely can't be bigger than IS, but there has to be a little bit of margin too for that knee current, to, to have enough knee current to turn that diode on. So we have to make sure that IZ is greater than that knee current, which we can label as IZK. At the other extreme, we have to make sure that if the load current is really small or even goes away, that well, IZ will be equal to IS. We need to make sure that that current that's going through the diode then is not too much to cause the diode to burn out. Basically, you need to make sure that it's below the rated power. So let's look at a voltage regulation example where I have a 10 volt source. I have this current limiting resistance here that's at 10 ohms and my Zener diode has these characteristics. It has a Zener voltage of 6.8 volts. It has a knee current. So the minimum current that it needs to flow through it in order to turn it on of one milliamp. It, ha it has a power maximum, so a maximum power dissipation of one watt. And what that means is that the maximum amount of current that can go through the Zener diode is going to be one watt divided by the 6.8 volts that, it, that the diode regulates to, which gives me 147 milliamps. So I'm going to use these characteristics to determine what is the range of resistances that I can have at the output that will still allow the Zener diode to regulate without burning it out. So let's start with just assuming that I'm in regulation. If I'm in, in regulation, my current from the source is going to be equal to 10 volts minus 6.8, that's the voltage across that 10 ohm resistor, divided by the resistance of that resistor. And that gives me 342 milliamps. So that 342 milliamps is coming from the source as long as the diode is regulating. Now let's look at the case where I'm at the maximum current for the, for the diode, so where, where the IZ is equal to the IZ max. 
Now, if we remember that the current from the source gets split between the Zener diode and the load, and if we rearrange that equation, we know that the load is going to be equal to the current from the source minus whatever goes to the diode. And we know the current from the source is 342 milliamps. The current that can go, the maximum, we're looking at the maximum uh, current diode case, the maximum current that can go here is 147 milliamps which gives me to the load, I would can have 195 milliamps going to the load in this case. And if I figure out what, what is the resistance that will give me that, the, resi the load resistance is going to be that 6.8 volts that is regulated to divided by the 195 milliamps, which gives me 34.9 ohms. Now if I have any more than 34.9 ohms in the load, there won't be enough current going to the load. More of it's going to be absorbed by the Zener diode, but that's going to be too much because I'll have the 342 milliamps coming from the source. I have less than 195 milliamps going to the load, so more than the IZM or 147 milliamps going through the Zener diode, and it will be exceeding its power dissipation and will have a shorter, possibly much shorter life expectancy. So we know that RL has to be less than 34.9 ohms. What about the other, the other extreme, where we need to make sure that the diode is turned on, so we need at least one milliamp going through the diode. Again, looking at the load current, we have 342 milliamps from the source, minus that one milliamp at the extreme case to make sure that the diode is turned on, gives me to the load, 341 milliamps. To get that 341 milliamps, I would have a load resistor of 6.8 over 0.341, which is 19.9 ohms. If I have any less than 19.9 ohms, more current would be flowing into flowing through the resistor, which means that I would have less than one milliamp going through the Zener diode. And if I have less than one milliamp going through the Zener diode, the Zener diode is no longer regulating. And all of these calculations that I do would, I've just done would no longer be true because the Zener diode is no longer 6.8 volts. So that RL needs to be greater than 19.9 ohms. So this is the range of allowable resistances for this particular circuit with that particular diode that allows the diode to regulate as long as I'm above 19.9 ohms and doesn't burn out the diode as long as I'm below 34.9 ohms. One thing that should be pointed out with these Zener diode voltage regulator circuits is they're not very power efficient in terms of transferring energy from the source to the load. So for example, on this, on this circuit that we've just looked at, let's, let's say we've got a range of about 19.9 to 34.9 ohms. Let's, let's, let's say that the load resistor is at, it, is at 25 ohms. We have a power from the source that's going to be equal to the voltage of the source times the current out of the source. This is what's being provided and we've got 10 volts multiplied by the 300, 342 milliamps. So that's going to work out to 3.42 watts that's of power that's provided from the source to this load. Now at the load though, the power to the load is going to be the 6.8 volts squared divided by the resistance of 25 ohms, which works out to 1.85 watts. So it looks like about half. Half the power from the source is actually getting to the load. The rest is weighted, wasted in the Zener diode or in this shunt resistor right here. To see what the efficiency is exactly, we could take that 1.85 watts that's getting to the load, divide by the 3.42 watts coming from the source, and that works out to 54.1% of the energy from the source is actually getting to the load. And you'll find that this, this level of inefficiency in lots of these Zener diode circuits.